This story happened a year ago. I was living with my then boyfriend and now fiance. Anyway, we lived in a townhouse in the suburbs in a pretty safe area. There had been some robberies a couple of blocks away, but they weren't common and I felt pretty safe walking home alone at night. So one weekend, my boyfriend's brother Marshall and his girlfriend Amy and her brother Curtis were visiting. We were all just gonna chill and have a couple of drinks and play video games and relax. My boyfriend had his last LSAT and after months of hard studying, he just wanted to relax before the exam. Unfortunately, I ended up getting very sick. It was the worst flu I ever had. Extremely high fever. One degree higher, and I would have had to go to the hospital. Nausea, headache, body aches, all the good stuff. Of course, I didn't want to stop my friends from having a good time, so they came over anyway, and I just stayed in my room. They went out to eat before they came over. So I was in bed alone watching TV, and felt like I was dying. I slept on and off, and at about 4pm, I heard the door open, and figured they were back. When I called out for my boyfriend, and no one came. Even if he were there, he probably wouldn't have heard me. But I knew he'd come and check on me as soon as he came back. So I assumed I had just heard something fall or the neighbors were making noise. So I dismissed it and went back to sleep. I remember I was sleeping on my back and in deep sleep, I groggily opened my eyes and thought I saw a figure move across my room. I was so heavily medicated and so sick. I didn't even fully understand what had happened and what that meant. Like I saw the figure, but it didn't connect in my brain that I may have seen someone. And since it was pretty dark in the room, I think part of me just thought it was the TV. Finally, around 7 p.m., everyone came back. They were loud. Amy, who was my brother's boyfriend's girlfriend, was very tipsy. And she's very fun when drunk. So there was a lot of laughter. My boyfriend came in to check on me. He brought me soup. He sat and talked about his day as I ate it. And I asked him to look in the basket under the bed to get me a new bottle of aspirin. We had a full size bed and I had one small basket under the bed where I kept an extra bottle of pills, toothbrushes, shaving cream and stuff like that. I didn't know it right away, but thank God he looked under the bed. He put his head up and handed me the aspirin, but his facial expression changed, like he lost all the color from his face. I didn't think much of it and said, thank you. He said, come on, I'm gonna take you to the bathroom. He never stutters. I was kind of out of it, but I remember picking up on it. I told him, no, I really didn't have to pee and I didn't feel like getting up. And he said, no, let's go. I don't want to have to climb back up the stairs just in case you need a pee in 10 minutes. I remember feeling pretty hurt by these words, but he was right. Since I just had soup and a bottle of water, he walked me downstairs and I couldn't understand why we couldn't just go to the bathroom upstairs. I think I was so sick I felt too exhausted to question it. He sat me on the couch. What's going on? I practically whispered, as my head was hurting a lot. He took out his phone, and his hands were shaking. I asked him what was wrong, and I will never forget how my heart sunk, and I felt like I couldn't breathe when he whispered, There was someone under the bed. Amy laughed so hard. I laughed thinking it was a prank, but it felt serious. My boyfriend's brother suggested we get out of the house and so we did. 
and as we're leaving, we heard a thump upstairs. We quickly left, drove away and called the police. The police came and searched, but didn't find anyone. He must have known we suspected he was there. My boyfriend couldn't give any description, only that he saw sneakers. But it was so dark, he really couldn't see. Scariest thing that still leaves me on edge is that the police found a knife under the bed. It was a small steak knife, but very dull and rusty. There weren't any killings in the area, so my friends assumed he just wanted a place to sleep. I'm not really sure how we got into our place, but I have some theories. I'm really proud of how my boyfriend handled everything. He's a calm and collected person, but I always assumed he wouldn't be that way in a crisis. I just hope I never see this person again. And since that incident, I now stuff loads of things under my bed for storage and to avoid this happening in future. When my aunt was in high school, she was a knockout. She was very popular, homecoming queen, was in beauty pageants, and is a very attractive young woman. She got hit on constantly, and had older men making inappropriate comments on the regular. One day, standing in line at the grocery store with her mum, the man in the line behind them started talking to her and asking her questions. My grandmother was checking out, and not really paying attention to her 16-year-old daughter, assuming she could take care of herself in a crowded grocery store in the middle of the day. Anyway, he starts asking her how old she is, and is that her mum, and what they're making for dinner tonight. Does she have any sisters as pretty as her? The usual cheap fare. Eventually my grandmother notices him talking to her, and tells him they have to leave now and to have a nice day. Just as my aunt and grandmother are loading the groceries into the car, the man walks up to their car and tells my grandmother that my aunt should be a model and that she should keep an eye on her because boys that age only want one thing. My grandmother told my aunt to get into the car and then told the man if he spoke to them again, she would be calling the security guard over. He angrily walked away, mumbling about how he didn't mean any harm, glaring at my aunt who was sitting in the car the whole time. They drove home and didn't think anything of it. That encounter was weird, but not nearly as bad as what happened later. I should mention at this point that my grandmother lived with my three aunts, just the four of them, in a four bedroom house. After going to bed that night, my aunt woke up and felt a cold breeze coming in through her window. She didn't remember opening her window before bed and thought she would get up to close it. Then she felt something move on her bed. She didn't move because she was certain it was a hand. She felt someone reaching under her covers and touching her. The way her room was situated the person was laying on the floor, beneath her bed and the bedroom door. If she were to run, she would have to get past the person first. She lay in bed for a minute, terrified, trying to think of what to do. Then she heard him talking to himself and breathing heavily, as he tried to touch her underneath her clothes. She's fairly sure she knew he was masturbating as he touched her, because she could hear something that sounded wet. Overtaken by fear and adrenaline, she screamed and jumped out of bed, hurling herself over the mystery intruder and into the hallway. My grandmother woke up and came running into the hall, and my aunt told her what happened. They checked the bedroom. The intruder had left out the window. Also. My aunt's bedroom was on the second floor. The intruder must have been in such a hurry to get away 
that he left his ladder behind, along with Polaroids of my aunt that he had been taking at the grocery store, at her house, and in her backyard. All the photos were on the floor around her bed, where the man had been laying. My grandmother called her neighbour, who came over with a shotgun to sit on their porch all night. The guy was never caught, but thankfully, my aunt never saw him again, and they got a free ladder. My sister is a little than two years older than me. We shared a room all the way up until she was 19 and moved away for college. This is a story of when she was little. A story that she told me when I was little. And one that mother and I still talk about to this day. My sister is now trying to convince herself that it was a bad dream. But she never did like talking about it. She was two, or maybe three, and she had a room to herself. With a white metal bed at the wall in the corner. I know this from a photo taken from the time. They had only lived in the house for two months when she started crying in the middle of the night. My parents would rush in to calm her down. She would speak of how there was a monster under her bed. Typical kid stuff. My dad would tell her it was just a dream. But my mother, who lived her whole life with strange and unexplainable things happening to her, it continued to happen. Each time, my sister would give more details about the monster. She said it had pee-pee eyes and poo-poo under its nails, she would say, and that it smells really bad. Mother kept hoping that it was nothing more but a childish nightmare and that it would pass. But when my sister started calling it by name, my mother became worried. Her name is Daishi. My mother also owned a black cat. And every time my sister would scream, my mother would open the door and in would run the cat straight under the bed. Mother recalls hearing the cat dash around under the bed as if it were chasing something. Dashi hates black cats, my sister told her. The cat would even stand guard while my sister slept. And I have read that black cats ward off evil spirits and demons. From what my sister would tell me, in the night, Daishi would talk to her. It would keep my sister up all night, just talking, always trying to get my sister under the bed. She had a harsh, low voice and my sister would know when she was there, by the smell. She would look over the side of her bed and see an arm gesturing at her to come. I asked her how she knew what its eyes looked like, and she explained that at one point, they she tricked her. She had gone to her room, and our elder half-sister was sitting on her bed. You see, our elder half-sister lived in Hawaii, but she would visit sometimes. My sister was surprised and happy to see her, and they started playing tag. At some point, my elder sister goes under the bed and asks my sister to join her. It's okay. Let's play under here. Of course, she would trust her sister. So she goes under the bed, and her sister starts tickling her. But then it turns into playful scratching, and her face starts changing. I remember seeing the face, but I can't remember the details. Just the bright yellow eyes and the dirty long nails. I don't know what happened after that, said my sister. This went on for a few months, but around the time I was born it stopped and the monster never came back. But a few years later, 
mother was looking through some of her spirit books, and one of the books had a list of names given to well-known evil spirits and demons. She was just skimming over titles until she saw something familiar. They she. Mother said she froze, staring at the name, double checking just to make sure she was reading it right. She flipped to the section that described the demon, and it said something like, They she, a demon spirit that appears before children. It smells of rotting flesh, has bright yellow eyes, and an unknown body shape. I remember mother coming to get us and showing us the page. But since then the book has vanished, and my mother has no idea what happened to it. And I know it was real because I remember reading it. We still live in the house. My sister and I slept in that room for years. Even as I recount this, my bed is in the same corner, against the same wall that my sister's bed was. I sometimes wonder why it left when I was born. But then again, some weird things happened to me throughout my childhood, but none as scary as the demon under her bed. This happened about five years ago, when I was 18 and living out of home for the first time, while attending university in Australia. Instead of living on campus, I decided to get an apartment with two friends of mine, all three of us girls. We ended up with this sweet triple story house not too far from university. I had the master bedroom and it was on the second floor facing the street and it was long, like weirdly long for a bedroom that wasn't matched in width. When I first moved in, I had a lot of floor space on the account that I couldn't put much furniture in without the room too narrow to walk through. The door to the room was at one end, and at the other end, about four or five meters away if I remember correctly, was the door to my private ensuite. And opposite that was the door to my private balcony, which, as it was on the second floor, and I was stupid, I never locked. Between the ensuite and the balcony was my bed. Eventually, I filled the room with furniture mostly bookshelves, which meant two things. First, there were about 30 to 40 centimeter wide paths around my room with no other way around, unless you started jumping on things. Second, that in order to make it seem less crowded, I stuck up a lot of mirrors. From any one point in the room, I could see myself reflected at least twice, sometimes three or four times. One night, I was in the shower and like usual, I hadn't closed my ensuite door fully. The vents were pretty terrible, so I liked to let out the steam while I was showering. If the door was open, I could see a little of my room from within the shower, and a little more if I angled myself just right and managed to catch a glimpse of one of the many mirrors. I was halfway through singing don't Fear the Reaper by the Grateful Dead, when I happened to open my eyes and see, reflected in a mirror, a man in a red jumper lying under my bed. If you've ever going to piss yourself in fear, I fully recommend being in a shower. He had his face turned away while he was scratching his head. If he hadn't chosen that moment to scratch, I probably would have made eye contact with him and given myself away. If I hadn't been a theatre student with The Show Must Go On branded on my heart, then I probably would have screamed and given myself away even more. But instead, I swallowed my fear and kept singing. I made sure to move further back in the shower as well, so I wouldn't accidentally catch sight of him again and risk being caught noticing him. 
Because of the narrow paths through my room, and the fact that it was so long, there was zero chance that I'd be able to make a break for my bedroom door without him grabbing me. From where he was lying, he would be able to reach out and grab my ankle the second I stepped foot out the bathroom. My phone was on my bed, so I couldn't grab that and call for help. Screaming for my housemates would probably end up with Mr. Under the Bed climbing out and murdering me before they could do anything. But I couldn't stay in there forever. Desperately singing the guitar part of the song, I tilted the shower head away from me and grabbed my towel off the hook, wrapping it around me so that at the very least I wouldn't be naked when I emerged. I don't know if he wanted to murder me or just see my vagina, but Mr. Under the Bed definitely saw some vagina that night because I threw open the door and immediately jumped and landed on the bed. He looked quite shocked as I passed over him, and I bounced from the bed to the floor and pulled the balcony door open, ran out, and then scared the ever-loving shit out of some neighbours as I vaulted the railing in a tower while screaming about an intruder. My housemates were in the living room downstairs and saw me fall through the air into what they assured me was a very majestic heap on the ground. My injuries were minor, and more importantly, my towel stayed on, so I counted that as a win. I explained the situation to them, and they all ran outside, and to the neighbours, who went in to look for the guy. Mr. Under the Bed had already made a break for it through the back door by the time they got there. We called the police, and they found his jumper two doors down, probably ditched because it was bright, red, and very noticeable. Come on, under the bed guy, get your shit together, wear dark clothes like normal creepers. But not the man himself. Five years later, I've come to tell the story with less horror than I originally did. But now, I'm compulsive about locking every door and window in the house even if my housemates don't think it's a big deal. This story starts in the summer circa 1990, in a Dallas suburb. As a child, and still today, I was very whimsical and didn't pay much attention to anything that didn't concern me in that moment. It was a summer day, and I was playing in the backyard. My mom had to run some errands, so of course I stalled and waited till she was walking out of the front door, until I finally dragged Ars to join her. Did you shut the sliding door? She asked. Not remembering or caring at all, I said yes and we went about our day. We arrived back home sometime early evening around six. As we enter the house, the sliding door is wide open. Of course, my mum scolds me for not remembering, and me truly not remembering, apologise and go about my business. As the night winds down, my mum tucks me in and goes downstairs to run a bath. So, like any five-year-old, the last thing I want to do is sleep. As I lay on my bed playing with micro-machines and making goofy kid noises, I feel my bed move slightly. I immediately pause and look around. I quickly dismiss it and go about my usual kid business. A few minutes later, the end of my bed lifts up and slams back down. Of course, I did what any five-year-old would do and screamed like a banshee. Then in the dark room, my bed started moving and a shadow slowly tries to rise from the foot of my bed. I stood up an Olympic jumped all the way to the door and met my mum mid-stairs. As I hysterically tell my mum what happened, we run to the kitchen and call 911. We kept it short and ran to the car and waited outside for the police. As we wait, we see my upstairs light turn on, then the hallway, then the stairway. Then a minute later, we hear the police screeching in. They flew in the house and searched to no avail. 
they said that we probably walked in as the intruder was trying to rob the place, although nothing was touched or disturbed. Needless to say, I didn't sleep in my room for a month, and now every time I get home at night, I always turn on every light and check every crevice. Thanks a lot, you creepy burglar. I hope we do not meet again, because I would beat the shit out of you. This story happened to a girl who attended my high school and was two years my junior. Our story begins as Daphne was going to bed one night during a Charlotte winter, which can get unpleasantly cold. Daphne tells that she remembers being restless during her sleep and that she remembers groggily waking up and pulling her covers up, which had gotten displaced several times throughout the night. At one point, Daphne wakes up, shivering as once again her blanket had been yet again manoeuvred away. Without moving or opening her eyes, Daphne lays in silence, wondering why she would keep kicking her blanket off in her sleep when she felt her blanket being pulled towards the foot of her bed. Terrified, Daphne opens her eyes to a man staring at her intently while pulling away the covers. Immediately, Daphne jumps up, screams, and runs out of the room to her parents. The man escaped through the window and was never found. The police were called and discovered beer cans and a knife under her bed giving them a reason to believe the man would frequently watch her at night. No one knows if the man was planning on raping her, or merely liked watching her in her sleep, or was having himself a nice wank while he watched her. This happened about six months ago. I was 22 at the time, and my daughter was only four. I lived in a two-story house with just me, my daughter, and my husband. I was taking at-home classes to be an iPhone specialist, starting at 5pm and ending at 10pm Monday through Friday. My husband had left for his two weeks of training that he does every year for the military. So it's just me, my daughter, and our pit bull mix Mavis. We had just finished my class for the week, and had just this weekend free, so I decided that we would go to my mother's house until Sunday. So I pack up my stuff and my daughter's stuff, and we went for the weekend. We returned home Sunday, to find someone had broken into our home. There were muddy footprints and windows open, but nothing was missing. I was going to call the police but my sister's husband explained that the cops wouldn't do anything. Nothing happened that night, but the next day my mother came over to pick up my daughter, so I could do my classes without worrying what she was into. They left, and I went to watch the class upstairs. I put my headphones on so that I can hear my instructor teach the class, but I swear I kept hearing stuff downstairs. I even texted my mum and told her I kept hearing stuff downstairs, and it was creeping me out, but she ensured me that it was probably just Mavis, because everything was locked up tight, and no one could get in. I agreed, thinking I was probably just freaking myself out. I continued listening to my instructor teach, and I swear I heard footsteps on the stairs. So I hurry up, take my headset off and listen but then I didn't hear anything. I walked down the stairs and didn't see a thing. So I went back to class. After my 10 p.m. class was over and my mom decided to just keep my daughter for the night, I was doing my homework with Mavis upstairs. When all of a sudden, she starts barking and growling and ran downstairs. Now, Mavis will usually bark and growl at the slightest noise outside so I didn't think much of it, but decided I should check it out anyway, because of what happened while I was at my mother's. 
Again, nothing out of the ordinary. So I went back upstairs. I was finally done with homework. And it's about midnight. So I went downstairs and called my mum like I do every night. We were talking. And I decided to open my daughter's door and peek in. I didn't know why I did this. Because my daughter wasn't my mother's for the night. Just a habit, I guess. I should have mentioned earlier that when you look in my daughter's room, her bed is on the far wall, a good ways away from the door, so you can clearly see under the bed. So I open the door, and to my horror, there's a man under her bed. I just froze and didn't move, and just stood there in shock. After what felt like minutes, I slowly shut the door and whisper into the phone to my mum that there's a man in the house under my daughter's bed. My mum was terrified, and she screamed at me to get outside and stay on the phone with her, as she had my brother call the police. So I ran outside with Mavis and waited for the police to arrive. In about three minutes they arrived and searched my house, and found no one, but discovered my bathroom window was open, and they happened to shine their light at the living room window, and I could clearly see two huge handprints where they slid the window down. The cops waited for my mum and brother to get there, and while we were waiting, they told me about this man that usually stays in houses down from mine with his parents. Both of his parents have a pretty bad drug habit, and this guy has been known to put women in the hospital and trying to kill them. What scares me even more is since we have bought this house, my daughter has been terrified and always told my mum she wanted to stay with her because it wasn't safe at mummy and daddy's house. I didn't think too much of it because I thought maybe it was just a new place and you know how kids are with new places. After this whole thing happened, I stayed with my mum until my husband came home. We decided to ask our daughter about the house. What she told me absolutely terrified me. She said that at night, while her dad and I slept, monsters came to her window and tried to get in. She says it's a boy monster and a girl. The next day we installed alarms on all the windows and security lights. I can't stop questioning why. Why would the man hide under my daughter's bed? Was he waiting for me to go to sleep? Was he waiting for my mum to bring my daughter back home and I put her to bed? I get sick to my stomach, thinking about what could have happened. My ex-girlfriend was terrified of underneath beds. I don't remember how exactly it came up, but I think it was to do with her grabbing some stuff from under her bed one night. Basically she wouldn't do it and was absolutely terrified of the thought. I never understood why until she told me. So her cousin who she adored came home one night to find the house unlocked. They were really confused and frightened about why. So, they checked the house, but couldn't find anything missing. They just assumed that they left the place unlocked. That night, my ex's cousin was lying on her bed, doing whatever young girls do, when her cat would not shut up. It was lying on the floor of her room, hissing, Despite her appeals, the cat kept going, being very aggressive towards the underside of the bed that she was lying on. She decided to see what all the fuss is about, so she got down on her hands and knees and looked. There was a guy lying there on his side, staring straight into her eyes, holding up a mean looking knife. The girl obviously screamed like crazy and bolted out of her room, taking the cat with her. Her parents came running. She hysterically told them that there was a man with a knife under the bed 
and her dad grabbed the door and threw it shut, locking the guy in there. While the police were called, as much as he tried to hold this guy inside the room, he ended up overpowering him and getting the door open and running as fast as he could out of the house. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but the guy was never found. Thankfully, my bed is very low and couldn't fit anyone in there. She now opts for beds without anything underneath, the kind that you can push up and have all the storage space underneath. Makes sense, really. Stay safe, everyone. I am 22, and this incident happened a year and a half ago. I had just moved into my first apartment and was in the process of moving in. The door that led into my apartment locks itself automatically when closed. So I was going to the entrance of the apartment complex to get my mail while talking on the phone with my boyfriend. I returned to my apartment and sat on the bed while opening the mail whilst using the phone. I dropped the phone on the floor and it landed under the bed. So I had to lie on the floor and stretch for it. I saw something that caught my eye. There was someone under my bed. My eyes widened and I choked the urge to scream. The person laying under my bed was lying with his back towards me and his head in his chest. So I couldn't see his face and he didn't see me. Trying to be rational while so many thoughts rushed through my head. I picked up the phone and said, sorry, I dropped my phone. I'm just going to have to take a shower and call you back. The bathroom is right by my bed. So I hastily walk in, quietly locked the door, turned the shower on and jumped out my window as my apartment is on the first floor and I called the police. But to go across the street and see if anyone comes out the door of the apartment complex. This was during summer and it was still light out. I placed myself across the street, hiding behind a car whilst watching my open bathroom window and the entry door. I called my boyfriend and he came to me just before the police. I gave them my keys and they went inside. Only moments later, two cops came out holding a thin and very tired looking man. His eyes looked crazy, but he didn't try to get away. The policeman that had stood beside me and comforted me while the police searched through the house. I was a mess, shivering and crying. He told me that the man stood outside my bathroom door with one of my kitchen knives waiting for me to come out. The man had somehow crept into my entry door while I was getting my mail and hid under the bed. The man that was trying to hurt me turned out to be a homeless person and was placed in a mental hospital. My boyfriend moved in with me the very next day. This incident happened to my mum over 20 years ago. She worked at a local pub. The pub mainly catered for fishermen as the town is off the western coast of Australia. So she knew most of the people who would come in for drinks or a feed. However, every now and again, people from town would come in. She told me one bloke used to come in who she knew from house parties around the place and always wanted to talk to her while she was working and would say sorry and keep doing her thing. One night, she finished work at around midnight and walked home a few kilometers away. She lived with a few housemates who were blokes, all good mates. When she got home from her shift, she decided to have a shower. Making her way back to her room, she realized her door was open, which is normally shut. All the fellas were asleep, so she blew it off as wind or something. She laid down in bed, 
to go to sleep. But something didn't feel right, for reasons that she can't explain, and she felt the need to look under her bed. What she saw under the bed was the bloke from the bar who had followed her all the way from work. She tells me that she just stared at him for ages, and he didn't move nor breathe, to the point she thought he was dead. She went out of her room calmly, and went to one of the guys' rooms to tell them she had a dead bloke under her bed. They raced him with a baseball bat to find the guy halfway out the window. He managed to escape and run away. The police were called, and because they all knew who he was, the cops picked him up next day. The thing that bothers me the most is what his intentions were with my mum that night. Arsehole gets a fine and was never allowed back in town. Too soft in my opinion. I am a 25 year old female. I was 23 at the time this took place. I had been a college student, but had to quit due to a major surgery in my leg. So I was unemployed and had just spent a few months recovering. I was finally off crutches, but still limping around and lived in an old Victorian two-story house that is now a duplex. I live on the ground floor and a middle-aged reclusive woman occupies the whole second floor. There are separate outside entrances, you see. And I live with a male housemate that was also a friend that is a few years older than me and was employed as a security guard at a local casino. Our street is known for being seedy and not a good neighbourhood. But I've always felt pretty safe never had too much trouble. One night, as I was home with my roommate and my boyfriend, we were all watching movies in the living room, which is out in the front of the house. My roommate's girlfriend then comes over drunk with another male friend of ours. The male friend sat down to watch movies with us and immediately passed out. And my roommate and his girlfriend went to his bedroom at the back of the house and immediately started having the most insanely loud intercourse I've ever heard. She always sounded like a trashy porn star. But anyway, a few minutes into the session, my boyfriend and I were still watching the movie. And we hear a loud scream coming from the back of the house. We couldn't distinguish what it was. Maybe something getting knocked over, but we figured it was just my roommate and his girlfriend being extremely loud and all over the place. Eventually, they finished and the house was finally quiet. Our movie ended and we decided to go to bed in my room. My room is in the middle of the house and shares a wall with my roommate's wall and the living room on the other side. My bed was against the outside wall of my room parallel to an old window that slides up and down. The side and back of our house are pretty high off the ground. Looking out the window, it's a decent drop to the ground. Outside my window are vertical and horizontal beams that extend to hold up a little porch balcony for the lady upstairs. It really ruins the view, having beams right there. My boyfriend went into my room and took off all of his clothes and jumped into bed. I started to take off my clothes too, but stopped. When I noticed the screens of my windows missing and it being open, I had a cat that at the time was indoor only. So my first thought was, The screen is missing. Striga must have gotten out of the window. Then I noticed that the window was pushed up way more than I thought possible. I kept thinking of my cat though. I was obsessed with keeping her inside. My first thought was to look under the bed and to see if she was maybe under there. It was dark 
but I saw a black mass and reached out to grab her, and thankfully she was still inside. The black mass wasn't her. It was a black hoodie. And someone was in it. I had grabbed someone's arm. For some reason, my first thought at that moment was that a friend was playing a prank on me, and it was probably someone I knew. So I kind of laughed it off and said, Hey, there's someone under here. Then I lowered my face to meet his face. And I realized I'd never seen this guy before in my life. This was not a friend and not a joke. I don't know this guy. I said in a less slightly calm voice. And my boyfriend was completely naked and told me to grab my gun as I was nearer to the closet than he was. Stay where you are. He screamed at the mass under the bed. The guy cooperated. I threw my boyfriend a robe and he put it on and jumped out of the bed near the closet where I was. He took the gun and pointed it at the bed and told the guy to come out slowly with his hands out. Since my roommate is a security guard, I ran to wake him up for backup. He rushed into the room and the three of us stood there with a teenage boy wearing a black hoodie coming out from under the bed. We were all kind of in shock, and we started to question the kid, who cooperated with us completely. He was being quiet and humble. His eyes shook violently from side to side, as if he was high or something. My roommate searched him. We emptied his pockets, and he had condoms, lube, porn advertisements from the back of a dirty magazine, and some dirty pills that he told us were Vicodin. But they were really just extra strength ibuprofen. He also had a pair of my dirty underwear in his pocket. Dirty underwear. That I had just had my period all over. That was the most disgusting part. We found ID on him as well. And a business card from a youth probation officer. So clearly he was a troublemaker. We also found a piece of paper with names and phone numbers on it that indicated he lived with his mother in a hotel room in a notorious drug motel that catered to prostitutes and meth. His high school ID was from Hooper High and he was clearly from the local Hooper Native American tribe or at least part Hooper Native. When we saw he had no weapons we started questioning why he was in my bedroom under the bed with all that stuff and asked if he realised how serious this was. He quietly replied that he had sex from the street and thought he could have some. Basically, he was a horny teenage boy on some sort of drug riding his bike around at night and my roommate's trashy girlfriend's sex noises were like a siren song in the night to this kid. He was so overcome by his horniness that he scaled the scaffolding and beams near my open window and crawled in under my bed, probably to masturbate, to what to he thought he was hearing in the next room. He probably jizzed on my underwear. He then kept apologising and saying he was sorry and God knows what. I was in shock and disgusted and wondered if he would have raped me if I'd have been alone. But we all felt a little compassion for the stupid kid. His fate was basically in our hands at that point, And we debated whether or not to call the police. We finally decided not to. And we basically lectured him and told him how lucky he was that he crawled into my window. And not someone else's. Because we could have shot him or called the police. And had him arrested. And whatever he was on for probation for would have been a lot worse. He kept thanking us and was super humble at that point. My roommate then escorted him out the front door and took his bike that he had left on the lawn and walked him to his shitty motel and watched him go inside. We kept all of his stuff. He didn't have money, just trash IDs and phone numbers and made sure to tell him we had his IDs and we knew where he lived. We had his mum's number and his probation officer's number and that if we ever saw him on the street again, he'd regret it. A drunk friend 
and my other roommate's girlfriend slept through the entire ordeal, and we told them next morning what had happened whilst they slept.